Superintendent Heidi Mercer, and I'm hoping that uh, we can talk about, Heidi, the new opportunities that are available with our district, and congratulations. Let's start off with that on uh, being named the superintendent. Um, at the When you were named the superintendent, it was really this, it was a process that we went through. The Board of Education really made a strong effort to try to you know, incorporate everything and get community views, community feedback, um, heard from a bunch of candidates. When you were in there and you made your, uh, your your description about what you wanted to do for this, you talked about your passion for the district and really what it meant. Can you share a little bit about that and kind of what that means to you? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate the opportunity and um, I am truly committed and love Lake Orion. Uh, as I was um, telling during the interview, uh, I actually had the opportunity to student teach here in the district, and that's really uh, when I first fell in love with, with the district and knew that I really wanted to become a staff member here. And so it started way back when as a teacher uh, at Walden Middle School, and I have been here for 28 years and have really loved every position, every building that I have been in. And it really is about the community and the people. Um, this community is wonderful. I've raised two children here, uh, still live here, and um, our district has wonderful staff. And that truly has what uh, has been what has kept me here. Obviously, so many people know you. We've had you on the podcast before uh, when Ben Kirby was here to talk about you as a person. Today, we wanted to talk about the district and all of the great things that are happening with the district. So I thought that kind of we'd hit on a couple topics and you can kind of share with our community, you know, all of the great things that are happening. I think the thing maybe to start with is the community interaction and the ability that we have um, as a district, you know, to connect with the community. Um, what started recently was the Dragon Community Champions, and that's something that you're going to continue. Can you talk about the importance of business leaders and community representatives with our district? Sure. I think that is part of what makes our community special is that uh, we have various partnerships and and relationships uh, throughout the district, throughout the community. I think it's very important that schools as well as businesses and other organizations throughout the community have partnerships, have relationships, uh, because we're all working toward a common goal, and that's to make sure that all of our stakeholders and our whole community is benefiting from all of the opportunities that each of these entities, I think, can provide. The opportunity for that interaction really, it's symbiotic, right? Because both sides can help each other and kind of uh, boost each other up, rising tide, lifting all boats kind of thing. Yes, absolutely. I, I truly believe in that, and I think that that is what makes our community stronger. The more that we can come together, work together, achieve common goals, that's going to benefit everybody in our community. The other thing is, is I think it makes our community a place that others want to be because it's very hard these days, I think, to keep connections with our busy world and, and our society. Uh, but really keeping that at the forefront, forefront, I think, makes Lake Orion a very special place. And I think people recognize that. That almost leads into the next thing with um, our human resources department and our staff. You know, our sta we have one of the great staffs, you know, in the area. I think that they really are a unique staff. And I think there are a lot of things about our staff that really are unique. You talk about the importance of the community. It seems like we have a lot of people with ties to Lake Orion. And that seems, uh, that's what really what makes our, our staff strong. Yes. We have a lot of people that live within the community, or if they don't live within the community, they bring uh, you know, their children to our district. Uh, and if they're not necessarily living in the community, they're still attached to the community. Uh, you go out and about, you're constantly seeing uh, our staff participating in events, attending uh, you know, different activities where our students are. So I would say we have staff that is very committed to uh, not only our district and what we do day to day, but also all of the community events and activities that are occurring. Our staff really recognizes that it's important that our students and our parents, all of our stakeholders, see us outside in the community involved in various things. And even this summer, I mean, you know, teacher, they think about teachers working September to June, 
But we have all these programs going this summer, and we have a lot of staff members who are giving their time um, as teachers, as volunteers, et cetera, right? Absolutely. In fact, every summer we add at least one program. We did it again this summer. So um, it's incredible to see. I love it. Um, over the years, it has just continued to grow. And that has really stemmed from staff and uh, administrators, building administrators, really thinking about the needs of our students, the interests, um, providing opportunities for our students and our families to keep keep students engaged during the summer. Um, sometimes that can be, you know, tough for parents. They're trying to work and trying to keep their kids engaged and uh, busy. And so we like to provide all of those different kind of opportunities. And like I said, each year it continues to grow, which I find more and more exciting. We have camps, we have summer schools. The summer school program has ramped up again since post-COVID now with at all three levels, you know, the high school, the middle school, elementary. There's other elementary programs that are even beyond the regular elementary school. I mean, in the summer, things happen still in this district. People don't even know that, right? Yeah, we are busy. I, in fact, um, I was at two programs just earlier before here, and I know you were as well. And yeah, we kids are going on field trips. Kids are in classrooms. Um, it's it's buzzing throughout the district, and that's that's really exciting to see. And kids are excited um, to to be in these different activities. And and some I even talked to this morning are ready to come back to school, if you can believe it. Really? That. Wow. <laughs> well, that, that means that they enjoy that, school, right? Absolutely. And it's probably something that our staff does to help enhance that, right? Yes. All of our staff members um, in various roles. I mean, I think it seems like, you know, talking to the Human Resources Department and Adam Weldon, who leads that department for us, it seems like this is a destination district, too. People are coming from other districts to work for us. That That is true. Um, I have spoken to several different staff members that have, uh, really sought out Lake Orion for various reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the you know reasons that I hear over and over again is our professional development and our support of staff. Um, that mindset of we're always growing as adults too mm -hmm. and wanting to continue to uh, get better, evolve, um, and to continue being progressive to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our students. Leading to that, you know, we need the resources to actually make all these programs happen and pay all the teachers and all and all these type of things. We have a very strong business department led by Andrea Curtis, uh, and it seems like they, they, this has been built over time. And we we are strong fiscal responsibility with the community's finances, right? I mean, this is something that our we're on stable ground. Yes, that is that is very correct. Uh, it really stems back to I became very involved. I would say in that. Uh, financial piece with the passing of the 2018 bond that our community supported. And you can look around the district and see uh, the great improvements that have come Absolutely. because of our community. Um, and, you know, our, our students, um, you know, seeing them come in these facilities every day and, you know, having the new uh, buildings and or the addition of wings or the updates of fresh paint, new carpet, furniture, Mm -hmm. Furniture was a big one that um, it, it was just an amazing um, day to see when students walked in and they had new furniture um, that wasn't their old hard uh, chairs and they could move furniture around and the furniture was flexible and soft. Um, so all of those things I think are, are very, very important and shows that our community is committed um, to to our school system. As long as you bring up the bond, I mean, I guess, can you explain a little bit, you know, these are not say, these are not changes for the sake of cosmetic, right? These are changes that are helping the educational environment and enhancing the student welfare, right? Absolutely. You know, I continue to use the word evolve. I, I believe strongly that we have to continue to evolve in public education. Um, our students' needs are different today than they were two years ago. Mm -hmm. And we have to be sure that we are able to rise to the challenge and to meet those needs. It, it's not the same as when we went to school. I hear people say that. It, it definitely is not the same at all. Um, and nor should it be. Um, you know, again, we need to continue, I think, to uh, make sure that we are, you know, up to date on our instructional practices. And that means 
also including the classroom environment and our facilities. It's a whole package that we need to make sure that our students are feeling safe and comfortable first in the environment. We have to have that before that before they can even begin to learn. So it's it's a whole package that comes together to provide the best education for our students that we absolutely can. Though you were the for the past 16 years, you've led the academics department, the teaching and learning was what we call it, you know, in our district. You've had your hands in a lot of different things in, in cabinet meetings involving working with the business of finance and the human resources people. You know, what are the things that are kind of these things all work together, right? It, it's not they're not all independent, uh, dynamic, independent operations. No. And I would say being, uh, you know, the leader in the teaching and learning department, that is kind of the central wheel, I would say. Sure. Um, We're teaching kids. That's what we do. Exactly. Right? That's our business. Uh, and so, you know, but I've also worked very closely with human resources who are hiring our sure. staff. Uh, we work very closely together. I work with Adam, um, you know, again, making sure that we're hiring the best staff for our students. Uh, we work very closely with Andrea, who, again, you know, financially, we need to make sure that we are um, being fiscally responsible and, um, you know, taking care of taxpayer dollars um, and making sure that, again, as much of um, the money is going into the classroom for our students. Andrea Curtis, who's our assistant superintendent of business and finance, and Shannon Hoyna, who's our director of business and finance, you know, their role is ever changing because the state is imposing certain regulations. They're changing how much money is given. Obviously, a lot of money was given right after COVID, and those were one time funds. How have they done in terms of kind of keeping us afloat when those are, you know, trying to handle those changes as they go? I would say uh, the way that we have handled um, all of our COVID funding, I'm very proud of it. Uh, We have made sure throughout all of, um, you know, the years that we have received those extra dollars that they have gone toward the purpose of supporting our students first and foremost. Um, This has not been a case of where we've just, you know, put the money in fund balance and, you know, decided we'd wait for a rainy day. We had the rainy day. And our students needed some extra support. Our teachers needed some extra support. And so um, those funds were specifically used um, to support our students during that time. Now, the funds are uh, waning off this year. Uh, We are fully prepared for that. We have known that all along. And so uh, part of that, you know, spending plan has been to make sure that we are prepared Uh, that when we are no longer receiving those funds, there will be some things that, um, you know, drop off that we feel that we are, you know, we're where we should be at this point. And there are other things that we will, you know, we have figured out where the funding will come from. Um, So it's, it's, this is a transition period for many districts because there have been so many COVID funds coming in, but that is, that is now uh, coming to an end. You talk about supporting the students specifically. That was a lot of mental health, right? That was something we saw coming out of the pandemic and something that we that you thought was really important to address. Absolutely. Uh, the mental health, uh, the social, emotional uh, needs of our students, there was a definite difference uh, when students came back from everything that they had gone through with COVID, um, which, you know, was, makes sense, right? it, it sure. makes total sense. Um But the need was vast um, and uh, very different than what we had experienced before. And so those funds became very critical to ensure that we were providing our students and our families for uh, for support as well, making sure that, you know, academically uh, students had more support, social, emotionally. uh, That is where we really needed to have um, some supports added. And we did just that. And you're able to track it too, right? You have some measures that that show that there's progress. It's not just anecdotal, right? No, no. Every everything that we have put in place is tracked, whether it be academic, whether it be social, emotional. Um, that's something I believe firmly in. We can't just go with, well, I feel it's working. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, we have we have to know it's working, especially when we are spending uh, dollars. Sure. On, on some of these interventions and some of these supports that we are putting in. We have to know that it's working. Otherwise, um, it's money not well spent. Sure. 
as you've led the teaching learning department, it seems like every year, you know, I'm kind of on the outside, but it seems like every year you're adding programs, you're adding opportunities, you're giving more options for students. What are some of the ones that um, you, you're you implementing now, you've implemented recent years and going forward that, you know, are going to be opportunities that are going to grow? Yes. I think it's very important every year that we're, con- we're continuing to add. Uh, there are also some things that we have decided, you know, to no longer offer if the numbers aren't there or the student interest isn't there. It's, it's very important, as I said before, to continue to evolve and make sure we're providing um, and meeting the needs of students. And that means constant change, <laughs> constant change, adding opportunities. Um, this year in particular at the elementary level, uh, we are kicking off a new math program, which we are very excited about. Uh, we had a group of teachers that worked very hard last year to choose a new math program and um, even, you know, input from the students. They're excited about the new math program as well. Uh, we're going to be taking a look this year at middle school. About every five or so years, we take a look and uh, really study the electives, for okay. instance, that we're offering. Um, these next couple of years, we're going to be taking a look at middle school um, seeing if, you know, the electives that we're offering, are they meeting the students' needs? Are they meeting the students' interests? Okay. Uh, so we'll be, you know, working with staff. We'll be working with students to try to, you know, see what their interests are and do they have any great ideas for some potential new classes. So they get some input on that. Absolutely. It's, okay. Our, our students, hearing from our students, I think, is very, very important, and that's also something that I look forward to increasing. Mm-hmm. Um, last year at the high school, uh, we implemented a student uh, advisory uh, to the superintendent, which I thought was just incredible. And so I had the opportunity to work with a group of students, and um, they identified several needs within the high school that they felt needed to change. And we had three groups that worked on three different projects to make the change, and we will work to continue that this year. Uh, Some other things at the high school We are working on uh, offering more um, AP classes, working on making sure that our students understand all of the opportunities at the high school. I think that's very, very important. Um, There are certain certifications that you can earn through CTE. Uh, You can dual enroll with a college, um, making sure, like I said, um, attending um, Oakland Technical Center. There are so many opportunities, but the key is making sure that our students and our families are aware of all of the opportunities. Absolutely. I want to make sure that our high school, this is the time, and even our middle school, this is the time to, you know, see where student interest lies and to and to experiment with different things and different opportunities so that when they when they leave us, they have a good idea of where their passion is and what their interests are. And as we talked, as we wrote about, if you saw the last Orion Living magazine, it was all about our career and technical education programs. Career readiness mm-hmm. is a program that's kind of really been enhanced and revamped over the last couple of years, um, led by Assistant Principal Rosa Everett at the high school and all the way down through, you know, the elementary and the middles. Like that's something that, you know, expand, right? That's something that expands. I mean, we obviously talk about the college track, but mm-hmm. there are so many other opportunities for students. And that, and that's something that our district is really involved in recently. Yes, yes. And I would say uh, that is an area, CTE um, specifically, I want to look to add more opportunities there. And again, um, you know, I intend to uh, follow up with students to see their ideas first. I have several ideas of my own, but I want to see. Uh, like the medical and, class that's going to yes, happen. Yes, medical class. Our medical foundations class is kicking off in the fall. That started off, we have five sections wow. of first that year. with a wait list. Oh, wow. And the class has, I mean, this is going to be the first year for the class. That is just super exciting. And that idea came from students. Okay. Students wanted us to start that career path. And so we had a couple teachers that took that challenge on, and it's going to be kicking off in the fall, and then we will add another class uh, following next year. So it's it's very important that I think that we continue to expand and gather ideas from from our students. And that's something that, you know, we want parent engagement too, right? Absolutely. We, I mean, we have these parent university yes. opportunities for parents to learn, but it, it's a two-way street, right? Yes. We can teach them, but also there's things that they can do to help their students. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's a critical piece too, that, you know, we're also trying to find ways uh, to save parents money. <laughs> 
Sure. College is very expensive if you have a student that is pursuing college or even some of these certifications uh, for trades can be very costly. And so, you know, we want to provide more of those opportunities here so that students, uh, you know, when they leave, um, are a little bit of ha- a little bit ahead of where they really want to be, and uh, they're saving some money. In yeah, addition that, to that, yeah, the unique part of our district is this community feel, and that's where parents get involved. And some parents who are parents, and then they, they as their kids grow, they come to work for us, and or they volunteer in the schools. We're back to obviously letting parents in the schools and yeah. volunteering and stuff. That interaction. And the dynamic of this community working together, it kind of circles back to what we talked about at the beginning, you know, is really what makes this district strong, right? I mean, th- that connection. Yes, it, it's it, it's everybody, I think, working together. And and our parents in partnership are even, our, you know, our, our families who their kids have grown. We still have a lot of families that are, they're not going anywhere. They're staying in Lake Orion because right. they love the community, but they've raised their whole family here. Um, all of us working together, I think it's, it's, it's critical and, and our, our young people will benefit from that. As we look around Orion, Orion's growing again, right? I mean, we see all this development and everything and that, you know, at some point affects the schools as families move in and it grows. Are, Are these things that are on the top? These are things that are, you're considering as a superintendent, you have to be aware of these things. Yes, absolutely. We are tracking all of the new developments. Uh, what those developments are, you know, are they homes? Are they condos? How many, you know, families are for, you know, going to be in each development? So we track all of that and work closely as well uh, with the township to make sure that, you know, this, the families that are coming in, we're ready for them and we have space. Right. As we look to the future kind of of the district, we're in such a great place now. Um, as you're taking over, are there things that you see on the horizon that you think uh, are going to be things that are going to be important to us. We obviously appreciate what the community did last year in February, you know, passing the sinking fund and passing, you know, the non-homestead millage to keep us where we need to be and, and keeping our buildings in order and everything. But going forward, are there things you see on the horizon that um, you're excited about and that you think are going to be even, even challenges, but that we're going to be able to face and we're ready to face? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there are plenty of opportunities. I think, uh, you know, within the community, I've already started, uh, you know, talking with the board. The board has um, already had some discussion regarding uh, a, a future bond. Because we have uh, a lot of needs. Still. We have a lot of needs. And the last bond that we passed in 2018, mm-hmm. we identified $320 million worth of need. However, the bond was for $160 million. Mm-hmm. So we still have those needs plus because, right, Right. it's been several years. And so uh, my hope is that we will start to uh, do a real needs assessment again throughout the district, identifying all of those needs, prioritizing them. Uh, There is a window of time where we could go for a bond that it would not cost the taxpayers any more money, which I think is very important. We need to make sure that we take advantage of that window. And um, we need we need another bond to be able to continue to move our district forward. Uh, looking at some other things, you know, um, the administration building will be moving um, to the community center um, next summer, hopefully. Yep. And so I think that is uh, an, an opportunity as well for the district. There might be some different ideas for some revenue as well that will help support our general fund. So I'm looking forward to... Uh, that. And, um, you know, I have, like I said, I have a lot of ideas. I'm really excited to hear from our community and from our students and from our staff as well. uh, Because while I have my ideas, I know that everybody has ideas as well. And so I want to hear that so that together we can work on building a vision and where are we going to be in the next couple of years. Well, hopefully the community, you know, keeps track of us on social media and what we share because you're going to be out in the community. You're going to be at different events and we're going to share where you are and they can meet you and talk to you and, you know, share their ideas about what you think. And you're going to be able to hear that and talk to them on a basis. So we really, you know, um, how he's going to be out there and be able to interact with people. And that, I mean, a lot of people know you who have been in the schools, but in terms of the community, you know, they're going to have an opportunity to meet you as well. Yes. And I, I hope, you know, I encourage everybody to 
you know, come up, say hi if you have an idea um, or you have a wish or, you know, anything. I would love to hear from you. Um, it's not a promise that, you know, right. sure, sure. But- <laughs> we're going to grant everything, but it's just, it's just hearing from people and their different ideas because a lot of times, even if it's not that full idea that comes to fruition, that may smart, spark a different idea. So Absolutely. I really do enjoy hearing from everybody and hearing what they have to say. And this is something we talk important. about all the time. We're Lake Orion Community Schools, community. right? This We are part of the community. We are not an isolate, on an island here. You know, everything is intertwined. Our mm-hmm. buildings are supported by, they belong, our buildings and this bonds that we talk about are supported and they belong to the community. They don't belong to no. us as an administration or, you know, the people who are running them, you right. know, we are caretakers of them for the community. And right. so we take that responsibility very seriously. A- absolutely. And that, that is something that I remind people very often that, that these are, these buildings, these materials, they're not ours. Mm-hmm. They are our communities. However, my expectation is <laughs> right. you take care of absolutely. them as if they were your own. And those are things that the board talked about when they selected you you know, is your involvement in this community that you have this trust of, for the community and this passion for the community to make sure, you know, that you, you've seen how things have gone before and you want to continue those because you, we have such a unique, if you look at other districts around, they don't necessarily have that same bond with the people who live there. And we're all dragons. We talk about that all the time. And I know that some people think it's cliche, but, but that was something that really comes through because everyone understands the importance of that. And to that end, um, these podcasts, we're going to continue these podcasts, hopefully on like a monthly basis. Heidi's going to have guests, you know, who are, uh, who she knows throughout the district and the community who really, and she'll be able to talk to them and, uh, you know, pick their brains about things that they're doing to help our students, to help our staff, to help the community. And uh, we're going to move forward. So uh, we really appreciate everyone checking in. Thank you very much for uh, sharing some of the district's visions and successes with everyone. And uh, we're going to move forward here. And we really appreciate everyone listening, watching. Thank you.